everyone. So today, guys, we are going to start our probability unit. Now, we've kind of already started it by doing the probability activity, and you guys have already calculated some what we call simple calculations for probability. But guys, what I want to do is I want to really explain what is all of this stuff. Okay, so today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at identifying the sample space and all possible outcomes, and then we're going to calculate some more probabilities. So let's go take a look. First and foremost, guys, outcomes. So you guys did this when you were doing your experiment. It is the possible results of a probability experiment. So for instance, if we roll a six-sided die, okay, then there are six possible outcomes. I can roll a one, I can roll a two, three, four, five, or six, right? Those are the possible outcomes, okay? Now, <clears throat> sample space, and I'm gonna talk about this, these two together, okay? The possible outcome comes and the sample space are very similar. Sample space is the set, like the whole set of possible outcomes. Now, the reason why they're a little bit different is guys, because when we get going in further, you're gonna see that you might have more than one sample space. We may talk about rolling a dice and flipping a coin. Those are two different sample spaces because there are two different possible outcomes. Okay, now an event, okay, when we talk about an event, an event is a set of one or more desired outcomes, okay, such as if I say I want to roll a six-sided die and I want to know uh, rolling an odd number, I want that event to happen, okay, so those, when we talk about an event, we're talking about the, the probability of just that one thing happening, and as we get further into probability, you'll see that we're going to start talking about two, three stuff events happening all at the same time, okay? All right, now, you guys have already kind of explored the probability of an event and theoretical probability and experimental probability. So let's talk about what is the probability of event. The official definition is, guys, it's the likelihood or the chance that that event will occur. Okay, now I want you guys to notice, okay, and I'm going to highlight it right here, okay, the probability will be a number between zero and one, okay, so zero is, it's a zero percent chance of it happening, right, that means that it's probably not going to happen, okay, zero is not likely, okay, as a matter of fact, it's probably completely unlikely, Okay, a hundred percent would be represented as the one, and that would be that it is for sure, okay, going to happen. Okay, so when we talk about our probabilities, we're going to express them as a decimal or a fraction or even a percentage. Okay, now theoretical probability is what should happen in an ideal world, right? Is in an ideal type of situation. Okay, so like if I were to say, if I'd go back up here and I say the probability of me rolling a two on the die, right? Well, there's one two on the die and there's a total of six outcomes. So it would be a two out, or excuse me, a one out of six chance, okay? Well, one out of six is a fraction. If I put it in my calculator, one divided by six is a decimal. Okay, and I can also say, oh, well, that would give me not very likely, that would give me a very low percentage, okay? So that is what is probably gonna happen. Now, you guys are gonna see this term, okay? Right here, probability of event A, okay? So if I were to tell you guys that event A, okay, equals rolling A2, okay? A rolling A2, then I would say that the probability of A, which is right here, okay, would be there's a one out of six chance, okay? Now, when we talk about the outcomes for a specified event, th those are called favorable outcomes. Now, we have to think about this. <clears throat> when all outcomes are equally likely, and we're gonna talk about, there's gonna be sometimes when they're not all equally likely, 
Okay, but when the outcomes are equally likely, then the theoretical probability says that you take the number of favorable outcomes and you divide it by the total number of outcomes. Hey, isn't that just what I did with the die? Yeah. Okay, and you guys actually have already calculated some of this, haven't you? Okay, and experimental probability. Guys, that's what you did, right? It's what it actually happens when you perform the experiment. Okay, so the number of trials is how many times you perform the experiment. Okay, how many times did you flip the coin? Okay, so each trial, okay, in which a favorable outcome occurs is called a success. Okay, so you guys did all of those tally marks and you flipped the coin and you guys added up all of your tally marks. You guys remember tally marks, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? Okay, six, seven. So let's say that the total number of successes, let's say that I rolled or I flipped heads seven times and I flipped the coin a total of 20 times. Okay, then my number of successes was seven. The total number of times I flipped it was 20. So it'd be seven out of 20. Okay, that's the experimental probability. Now, again, you guys did this in real life. You guys actually calculated the theoretical probability and the experimental probability for all of those fun experiments that we did. Hey guys, how cool is that? You've kind of already done this, right? I know, I know. You guys are gonna say, Miss Smith, you're such a dork. Yes, I am, okay? Now, probability. I'm gonna work through some problems with you guys on this assignment. You know what, I'm gonna do three of them with you guys. And then you'll kind of get better hang of all of this. So let's go start with, let's go start with question number four. I'll meet you guys down at question number four. Okay, guys, down here at question number four, it says for numbers four to five, okay, and this right here is the instructions, we're gonna find the number of possible outcomes in the sample space, and then we're going to list the possible outcomes. Okay, so let's look. Okay, question number four says, you flip a coin and draw a marble at random from a bag containing one green marble and two purple marbles. Okay, so let's look at our possible outcomes. First of all, one sample space is flipping the coin. So guys, we can either flip heads or tails, right? Okay, and in the marble bag, there's one green marble, so I'm gonna put green, and there's two purple marbles. So here's the first purple, here's the second purple. Okay, guys, those are, okay, right there, those are the possible outcomes, but our sample space is all possible outcomes. So if we draw both, it says you wanna draw both, and I wanna flip a coin and draw a marble. Okay, so let's say that first I flip a coin and I land on heads, and then I draw out the green marble. That's a possibility, isn't it? Okay, well, what happens if I flip tails and I draw out a green marble? That's another possibility. <clears throat> okay, well, what happens if I flip heads and I draw out a purple marble, the first purple marble, right? Make that a one. That's a possibility. Okay, well, can you guys think what I might think of next? Yeah, I might draw out tails and draw out the first purple marble, right? Okay, so what do you guys think might be the next possibility in our sample space? Yeah, it's possible that we draw or we flip heads and we draw out the second purple marble. Okay, well then, wait a minute. The next one, oh yeah, we're gonna flip tails and draw out the second purple marble. So guys, that is the list of all of the possible outcomes in the sample space. Okay, so how many possible outcomes do we have total? Well, guys, if you look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six total possible outcomes. So when I talk about the sample space, all of the possibilities, guys, you gotta list out all of the possibilities of all of the events, okay? All right, so that's just listing out the possible outcomes. 
Okay, now let's go and let's kind of shift gears and let's look at something else. Let's go down and look at number 8B together. 8B is in boy. Okay, a number 8. Guys, notice it says when two six-sided dice are rolled, there are 36 possible outcomes. Hey, you guys did this in your experiments, didn't you? Okay, so we're going to look at 8B together. Okay, now it says find the probability that the sum is less than 10. Okay, so guys, let's go to our flip charts or let's go to our formula charts and let's pull up, okay, the dice. All right, so it says we want to find the probability that the sum is less than 10. Okay, so before I go any further, guys, make sure you have your formula charts and or your flip chart, your unit 13 flip chart with you. Okay, so now that you guys have your flip chart or your formula chart, guys, I want you to flip to or turn to the dice probability, okay? So we want to find the probability that when we roll two dice, the sum is less than 10. That means that our sum could be two, or it could be three, or it could be four, or it could be five, or it could be six, or it could be seven, or we could roll an eight, or we could roll a nine. Okay, so those are all the possibilities, right? Okay, so let's go and look. Well, what's the probability of us rolling a two when we roll two dice? Well, guys, that probability is one out of 36, isn't it? Okay, so that would be one time, okay? What about the probability of rolling a three? Oh yeah, there's two ways that I can roll a three, is or a three, isn't there? Okay. All right, so when you guys look at your sheet, what is the probability or how many times, right, can we roll a four, a sum of four? Okay, so let's see, where are you on track? We can roll a sum of four three different ways, right? We can roll a one and a three, or a three and a one, or a two and a two, can't we? Okay, so those are three different ways. Okay, so we can roll a five how many different ways? Yeah, guys, we can roll a five four different ways, can't we? Okay, and then if we keep on looking, we can roll a sum of six five different ways. We can roll a sum of seven six different ways. Okay, okay, but what about a sum of eight? How many different ways can we roll a sum of eight? Yeah, the sum of eight, we can only roll it five different ways. Okay, and then for a sum of nine, hey guys, there's only four different ways that we can roll that. Okay, now why are we doing all this, Miss Smith? Because what we're doing, guys, is we're finding what is the probability that when we roll the dice, it's going to be a sum less than 10. So we have to find what are, and I'm going to actually do this in a different color, what are all of the possible outcomes, okay, when I roll the sum, or I roll the dice and the sum is less than 10. So guys, we got to add up all of those possible outcomes, okay? So when you add them up, how many different ways can we roll a sum that is less than 10? Yeah. 30 different times out of, now, how many total ways is there to roll two die? 36, okay? 36 different combinations, right? So 30 out of 36 times, okay, would be if we would find the sum is less than 10. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do. Can you tell me what would the probability be, the sum, that the sum is less than 10 in a percentage, what would that be? Did you guys remember what we did when we did all of our calculations from the activity, right? Okay, so you take in your calculator, you divide 30 by 36, and then you multiply times 100, and that gives you the percentage, right? 83.3%, okay? All right, so again, guys, the reason why I did this to, is to show you that if we're talking about multiple events happening, okay? This, guys, if you look, we have different, we have multiple events. We might roll a two, a three, a four, a seven, an eight, and not, right? But what we do is we want to find the probability of all of those happening, so we add them together.
okay? All right, last one I'm gonna do with you guys. Let's go down and take a look at number 15 together. Okay, number 15. Hey guys, we have a table right here. Now, some of you have actually worked with tables before and you understand how these work, but if not, let me explain it to you, okay? So first of all, it tells us right here that a survey of 2,554 people were asked what activity do you do to help relieve your stress, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna look at the, here's the activity, right? The number of people, 479 said they play video games. Okay, 315 said they like doing photography. Okay, so we've got all of these people. Hey guys, if you add up all of these people, it should add up to 2554. Okay, so that's the total, that's our total sample space. Okay. All right. Now it says, what is the probability that a person chosen at random listens to music? So I want to see, like, if you look right here and I'm going to point at it again, it says listens to music, probability music. That is the event that we want to find. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to look at listening to music. That's all we're going to focus on because that's all we want to find the probability of. Well, guys, 572 people listen to music. All right, so if I'm chosen at random, there's 572 people out of how many again? Yeah, guys, there's a total of out of 2554. Okay, so I want to find the probability of 572 people out of 2554. Okay, we're gonna practice this again. Can you guys tell me what is the probability that a random person listens to music in a percentage? There's a 22.4% chance that a random person that we pick listens to music to relax. Okay, how'd you guys do? All right, we're doing a little bit better. Okay, so guys, that's really all there is for today's assignment. We're just going to look at identifying what is the total sample space based on the individual possible outcomes, and then we're gonna find the probability of those things occurring, okay? All right, so guys, go have fun with this, and as usual, I'll see you in class. Adios.